In this video, I will show you how you can filter arrays properly getting back their respective results. Let's say we have a type called response data, which contains a data property of type string. Next up, we will create an array of items, including some response data objects. We will create an object with data banana and another one that keeps data dog. To create an inhomogeneous set, we will also add some undefined values to the mix, one in between and another at the end. With the demo value set, we can now add type annotations to our items. We'll inform TypeScript that our array consists of a union of response data values and undefined values. Next, we need to filter our items to only return the ones that are defined. We'll implement a filter that checks for non-undefined values. The filter removes items for which the condition evaluates to false. To verify our payloads, I'm adding a log statement. Let's quickly run the code and observe that we only receive response data items, just as expected. At first glance, everything seems fine. However, upon closer inspection, our IDE still considers our payloads as potentially untyped. They could be either of type response data or undefined. Ideally, we would like our filter to affect the inferred type. We can achieve this by converting our filter into a type guard. To do so, we simply add a type predicate to our filter function using the syntax item is response data. This small adjustment will ensure that we obtain the desired response type and provide better auto-completion support in our IDE. To make it more explicit, we can extract our type guard into a separate function. Let's create a function called isResponseData that takes an item as an input parameter. The item can be of the union type, which includes response data or undefined. The return type will be a type predicate indicating that our item is of type response data. Our type guard will evaluate to true if the input item is not undefined. Once we have set up the type guard, we can supply it to the arrays filter function. To demonstrate its functionality, I will rerun the code using TS node ESM. Perfect. Only defined values will be logged to the console and our types will be displayed accordingly. To complete this demo, I also want to show you the downsides of type guards. It is possible to assume invalid types. For example, we could say that the items are undefined in the case that they are not. In such cases, the type predicate will override TypeScript's compiler, leading to feedback that our payloads are undefined during design time. That's why it is recommended to back up your predicates and filters by test cases. Let's take a look at another case. Implementing an assertion function. By using the asserts keyword, we can transform our type guard into a type assertion. This approach requires an adjustment to our type guard implementation. Instead of returning a Boolean value, we throw an error if something unexpected occurs. If the input item passes the check, TypeScript's compiler will assume it has the response data type based on our assertion signature. While this may sound promising, it is not ideal for filter functions as it can lead to runtime crashes. Keep this in mind when choosing between a type guard or an assertion function. Assertion functions are better suited for validators that need to reject inputs at runtime, while type guards are great for narrowing down a type during design time.